Okay, let's go ahead and solve this triangle problem using the law of signs. So if you understand what the law of signs is, it's a basic formula. You could definitely look this up on the internet right now. And if you um, have that formula and a calculator, you should be able to solve this triangle problem even if you've never heard of the law of signs because it's a pretty straightforward formula. But let's go ahead and take a look at this triangle problem. You can see here we have all the angles of the triangle, but we only have one length. Okay, we know the side of this triangle is 27. So we want to solve this triangle problem, which means that we want to know all the sides and all the angles. We have all the angles, we have this side, but we don't know what sides A and C are. So this is a problem for the law of signs. Okay, so the law of signs is the following. So you can see I have the formula right here, but let's just take a look at a reference triangle. So again, we have these larger letters, A, B, and C. A, this is the angle A, okay, so that's what we're talking about. This is angle C, and this is angle B. Now opposite of angle B is side B, opposite of angle uh, A would be side A, and then opposite of angle C would be side C. So you have to um, kind of know how to read these triangles. But here is the law of signs, and this is basically what it says. So it says, um, if we have the length of A, okay, on this particular triangle right here, so A over sine of A, which would be the sine of this right there, is equal to um, this, this is just basically a ratio, so it could be equal to B, okay, this length right here, over sine B, and that is also going to be equal to C over sine C. Now, the great thing about the law of sines is you're not going to use all three of these. You're going to uh, select what information you're going to have, so you can uh, compare sine. Um, uh, you, uh, if you have information for A and sine A, you can uh, set that equal to C over sine C or B. Uh, and uh, B and C lengths right here. You can also do this this way. So there's any number of different combinations you can use this. You're not going to use these all three at once. You're going to pick two at a time and solve for a particular variable. So this will probably make better sense when we actually see uh, the law of signs uh, in action. Let's go ahead and take a look at this now, just in case you might be a little bit confused by my explanation. So sometimes it's just best to kind of see something in action uh, to uh, really understand it. Okay, so here is our triangle. So this is the problem given to us. So we want to solve for A and C. So let's go ahead and figure out uh, what A is. Let's find A. So in this problem, we have to look at what uh, was given to us. What do we have? Well, we have, we're looking for a side, uh, angle and its respective sides. So we know B um, angle B, and we know side B. So that's what we're going to have to use. So we have this part of uh, the law of sine. So this we have, all right? We have B and sine B I can get because that's 28 degrees. So now if I want to find A, well, let's go ahead and have uh, a uh, proportion set up where A is involved. So A over sine A. Now, do I have um, A's um, angle? I do, okay? So here, if you take a look at it, I have um, I could, or I could calculate the sine of A because A is 50 degrees. I know what B is. B is 27. And I could calculate the sine of B because I have that angle, which is 28 degrees. And you can see the setup right here. So what you want to do when you're using a law of signs is to identify in the triangle what given information you have to have a complete um, uh, fraction, i.e., you have both the numerator and denominator, an A and a A, an A and a sine A, or a B and a sine B. So here we have B and a sine B. And notice here, this is a nice little proportion. The only thing that I'm missing, I have sine of A, which is again sine of 50. I have uh, B, okay, which is 27. I have sine of B, which is uh, sine of 28. So the only thing I need to solve for is A. So I have one unknown. And this is basically the setup. So let's go ahead and just use some basic algebra to solve for A. And how are we going to do that? We're simply going to use the cross product. Remember, this is a proportion. So we can simply cross multiply. If you don't understand proportions well and you're at this level of math, then you definitely need to uh, do some review. But basically, to solve for A, I can simply cross multiply. 
All right, so it's going to use a cross product here to solve for a. So it's going to be a times sine of 28 degrees. We'll write that there, right? So a times sine of 20, sine of 28 degrees. We'll write that there, and then 27 times sine of 50 degrees. We'll write that right there. Now let me give you a little bit of a tip here. Um, do not start um, calculating out the sine of uh, 28 degrees, sine of 50 degrees. Don't do that yet on your calculator. You want to use your calculator at the very end, all right? Do all the algebra first, and then you can use your calculator to actually compute the answer. All right, so um, you do have to be aware, though, that the sine of 28 degrees and the sine of 50 degrees, are just, these are just numbers that we can get decimal values on our calculator. So here to solve for A, okay, that's what I wanna do. I simply just have to divide both sides of the equation by sine of 28 degrees. So you're gonna end up with this. A is equal to 27 uh, times sine of 50 degrees divided by sine of 28 degrees. Now we go ahead and get our calculator and we do all this number crunching. And if you do this correctly, you're gonna get A is equal to 44.06. Now, the one thing you need to be aware of when you're using your calculator is there's two modes. You have a degree mode and a radian mode, okay? Because our angles are given to us in degrees, you got to make sure your, your calculator is in degrees. And uh, trigonometry students are famous for working, obviously, you're, you're working both in degrees and radian modes. So when a student works in radians, they forget to switch back to degrees and they do a problem and get the uh, wrong answer. They do everything right, but their calculator is in the wrong mode. So if you're taking trigonometry, you have to be very aware before you start doing anything with your calculator to check to see, hey, it's in the uh, correct mode. In this case, it needs to be in the degree mode. All right, so that's how you, uh, you basically solve for that side A. So let's take a look at what we have now. So we have this side, we have this side now. So A is approximately 44.06 because we're dealing with uh, trigonometric uh, values. There are large decimals. Uh, you know, this is going to be an approximation. So now how do we get uh, C? Well, you have all different sorts of options. I'm going to use uh, B's information and then we'll use C's information. We'll set up with the law of, of uh, sines, right? So we have the angle for C, we're looking for C, and we were given B's uh, information. I'm using B because B is given to me as 27. I don't wanna use an approximation, so I'll use something a little bit more accurate. And then we will be done, but let's go ahead and do this work right now. Before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can, but the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style, and if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. All right, so let's find C. Again, we're going to use the law of sine. So C over sine C is equal to B um, right there, B over sine B. All right, so this is how we use the law of sines. Any two uh, angles and sides, you can compare A, B, C, doesn't make a difference. So let's go ahead and do the setup right now, right here. Okay, so C over sine of C, which is 102 degrees, is gonna be equal to B, which is 27, over sine of angle B, which is 28 degrees. And again, we're gonna use the cross product to solve for C exactly as we did with uh, uh, side A. So again, don't do any computing until you finish with the algebra. So we're gonna go to uh, do the cross product. So C times sine of 28 degrees is gonna be C sine 28 degrees is equal to 27 times sine of 102. So make sure this 27 is in front of the sine 102. When you're multiplying, you're not putting the 27 at the end of it, right? You want to put it at the uh, beginning of it because this right here is something you're going to have to compute in your calculator. Then you'll multiply that by 27. So to solve for C, we're going to take this whole thing and divide it by sine of 28. You could just follow the simple algebra right here. And then we'll get our calculator out in degree of mode. We'll do all this number crunching and you're going to get 
C is approximately 56.25. So the final answer would be this. This is the complete um, solution to this triangle. So we have all sides of the triangle. And of course, we were given all the angles of the triangles uh, originally. But this is what it means to solve a triangle. And again, this is uh, an illustration of how we can use the law of sines, but you're going to have to use the law of sines uh, for a lot of problems, the law of cosines, and you're going to have to understand you know, how you use these in various scenarios. This can get fairly complicated. So if you're like, oh, I totally get the law of sines, that's excellent, it's a good place, but you need to understand the law, whoops, I put the law of sines twice, the law of cosines. Okay, you're going to have to understand uh, both of these laws separately, okay, and then how to work, how to um, solve them uh, together, right? Because oftentimes you're going to have to use both of these laws together to solve a triangle uh, uh, problem in more advanced trigonometry. So again, if you are studying this and you need additional help, definitely check out my uh, pre-calculus course because I get really, really, really uh, uh, in uh, thorough detail and how to solve these type of situations and trigonometry. But hey, maybe you're just new to the law of signs and you found this interesting, like, hey, you know what, I kind of understand that. And that's excellent, okay? You, you know, we don't have to make this overly complex because, you know, uh, you have the basic sense of what the law of signs is and how we can use it to solve triangle problems. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.